don't escalate the hostility, don't escalate the uh, uh, anger. Control your mind, uh, watch what you're doing, be aware. <laughs> I'm Jackie Ivamy. I'm the writer of this fantastic theatre piece, Dialecticon. I wanted to write this piece because I came across this astonishing material a long time back, five, six years ago, and it was all these extraordinary characters, great, great characters, and um, clashing their ideas together in this uh, great happening, this 60s event, the Dialectics of Liberation Congress. And uh, when I read it, I thought, but these guys are speaking directly to us. Uh, they're telling us about what's happening now and we need we need to hear these voices again we need to hear that wisdom but also to see what they got wrong my name is Adebayo Bolaji and I'm the director for Dialectican there is a lot of discussion in the play but that's not all that happens I mean we have an amazing musician called Kate Luxmore um, and Liko Babalola um, who work together and they're collaborating with us on the project uh, we also have Mahogany uh, Limited who do masks at the carnival, and I mean, I mean, gorgeous masks. And then we've got these people um, dealing with all these elements in the play with us. I guess it's going to be our journey in rehearsals to find out how, how we tell it, because I just don't think there's any point in doing anything if you don't connect with it. You've got to connect with it first. And Jackie uses the word collision, which is great because it just brings out this energy. But it is a collision of ideas and we come to the end of it and say, OK, what's the resolution? It's all well and good us talking about it, but what are we going to do about it? And um, that's why I connected with it as well, because especially, I mean, someone who, I mean, I've been around and lots of percussion when I was growing up, just has this rhythm and this percussiveness about it, which really lifts the, the piece off the page and, and brings that to the right kind of medium, which is theatre. And so the energy is just like... Yeah, it, it blows the roof off. Dialectics means two great forces clashing together like that. And out of that clash, they destroy each other, but they also split into different parts. And out of those different parts, a new world is born. So you get this new idea. I think it's, uh, it's, the fact remains that uh, neither the white boys nor Stokely Carmichael, nor the Black Power, have stopped the violence which continues today, both in this hall and in Vietnam. I chose theatre because it's the most beautiful of all the arts. It's got everything. It's the actors and the audience together making something. Uh, it's got music, it's got energy, it's, it's taking us into the now, into the heart of things. And it's got such beauty in the costumes, in, in the movement. Uh, in the material it uses, it opens up all the greatest questions. I think I'm saying that theatre is always political in a sense, because if you go right back to the roots, the deep roots of theatre, wherever it comes, all over the world, Africa, Asia, China, Europe, it's always, it's always asking the big questions. It's asking, who are we? What's the system? What makes a good person? What makes a hero? How do we look for justice? How do we look for fairness? These are always the questions. Oh, you don't want to stop white violence, do you? You don't want to stop it, do you? Why don't you stop it? Because it's my survival I'm fighting for, white boy. I mean, back in 1967, you had all these great speakers representing, you know, stars of the counterculture. But then you've got, where were the women on that stage? You didn't see any female speaker. And it's ironic that, you know, you've got these speeches about equality and social injustice and so on and so forth and all this energy going on on stage. But if that were the case, where were the women? And you, you had this counterculture going on where they start to question stuff. And I find that really interesting because today, uh, as a young person, I'm kind of like, well, what's our voice? To stand on a street corner and wait for no one is powerful. These children are, dev are evolving from every single suburb, liberal and fascist and Bircher and conservative and radical homes, and are leaving. The language in these homes has always been, will always be, too functional. 
They cannot understand anything. Nothing means anything. If the change we are all talking about in this dialectics were to come about, most of the people in this room right now would not understand that change and would die. And what I love about this piece is that um, it's happening now. It's happening right now. It's shocking that that was 1967. Here we are in 2014. And is there really any difference? Is there really any change? I mean, you've got to make up your own mind. You know? don't, just because everybody around is screaming the same thing it doesn't mean that you have to join in or be lost in the universe. Are you still there? When I think of the play, one word comes to me. It's revolution. I get two images from revolution. One is flames, uh, and that's destructive, but it's also creative because the sun, fire gives us life as well as being very dangerous. But the other is of a great wheel turning. And as the wheel turns, um, so we, life and death, light and dark, uh, all of these things turn with it and we are part of that wheel and we are part of a great circle and that's what Dialecticon is also about. It's about us all being interconnected, about the whole thing being in movement and change all the time and that we, if we can realise that and go with that change then we can make a better world. As the man who attacks you, the policeman or the uh, capitalist, attacking you is attacking a fantasy of you, his fantasy, his image, because if you're there neutral, not intending him any particular harm, actually, but trying to straighten him out and get him out of his bag, and he projects on you a monster fantasy where you're going to, like, rape his mind or destroy his entire universe in some way that will leave him without a universe or without feeling good in the place where he is. In other words, if he feels threatened, and if you threaten him, by God, he's going to feel threatened. He's going to take the appropriate action that any madman in a nuthouse will take when he feels threatened. He'll strike back at you. Well, politics has to do with the distribution of power and, like, um, and the balance of power. And this piece definitely discusses ideas. And, uh, I mean, drama itself has to do with the balance of power, who has power now, who doesn't. And so it's definitely political in that sense. If you really were interested in other people, then you'd go and talk to the people who are hard to talk to, not the people who are easy to talk to. Help the people that are hard to help, the people who are going to be your worst enemies if you ever get your society, because that's what working people in this country are going to be, because they've been conned more than you have. Well, at the moment, we are workshopping, so we have to find out what's, what it is we the ultimate thing we want to say and I guess it's really important for us that people don't feel they're being force-fed. I think it's important for us that people feel they're part of a discussion and um, using the mechanism of theatre where we can involve the audience and just have this sort of collectiveness, this togetherness to talk about something but in a really colourful way, I think that's cool and that's exciting. I know it's a piece actually that's going to really connect with people. Um, and speaking, you know, as a, as a young performer, especially with young people, I can just feel that it's definitely young people, something young people need to hear today. Mm -hmm.